awkward. Uh, however, <laughs> um, you know it's uh, it's good to, it's good to see everybody. And you know, I'll start by saying, uh, you know, I'm very proud of our staff. I'm very proud of our team, um, our players specifically. Like, you know, what they did today was um, under the circumstances was really pretty cool. And uh, you know, we're excited to get the win. Um, first game of the season, obviously, first opportunity to be in Kinnick. Uh, we told the guys beforehand that, you know, it's it's special anytime we get a chance to walk into the stadium, and um, they certainly took advantage of that, specifically, you know, in the in the second half. And, you know, in regards to the first half, we had some missed opportunities. We had some of what you would call, you know, the, the norms in, in the first game. And, you know, just some things that, uh, you know, I think we probably could have handled better a little bit. Um, you know, however, you know, I think the, the second half is probably a better, better indicator as to what type of team we are. And, you know, I'll give a lot of credit to Illinois State, uh, specifically to, to what they do defensively. And um, Brock Speck knows who we are. Um, he knows kind of our DNA from his time at, uh, at Purdue. And, you know, him as a head coach, him as a defensive coordinator, uh, I wouldn't surprise to see what, you know, what, you know, unfolded there in the first half and, and how they, uh, you know, how they had a pretty good game plan. And then Tony Peterson and, and Travis Niekamp, the, the two coordinators, you know, are both good coaches, are both veteran coaches, and they've seen a lot of football. So you know, I think a lot of the first half was, um, you know, just the norms in, in the first game. And um, we've got some new guys out there in different positions. And, um, you know, I think just what you saw was was an example of that. But, you know, certainly a well-coached team out of Illinois State. And we wish them the best. They've uh, they've got a good football team. Hopefully both, both of their quarterbacks stay healthy, and, and they'll give them a chance. You know, the second half, you know, as it related to the game, you know, just from a, a messaging standpoint, the big deal was, you know, just clean up our execution, some things that, that shot us in the foot, you know, there early on with some penalties and uh, some things that ended up taking a little bit of momentum away from us. And, and any time you take the momentum away from you, you, you really start, you know, draining, you know, a little bit of the confidence as well. And and that took place there in the first half. But, but the second half, I think, is a better indicator of, you know, kind of the team that we are and, um, you know, what we're capable of. And we've got a lot to clean up. We certainly do. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll end before I take questions with just, you know, how unbelievably proud I am of our team, our staff, uh, the way our players responded in the second half. And, you know, this isn't, uh, you know, this isn't a normal day to day around here, obviously. And, um, you know, our players handled it with, with unbelievable class uh, to go in, you know, at halftime down a score or excuse me, up a score, but still in a one possession game, you know, the, the way that they responded was, um, you know, was really pretty special to see. So with that, I'd open up for questions. Start with Tom. Um, Tom Caker, Hawkeye Report, Seth. What, did, what was this whole process like for you when you found out that you were going to be in this position? Mm -hmm. And what did that post-game celebration mean to you? Well, in terms of the process, you know, it's, um, you know, there's still, there's still really your your primary responsibilities, which still exist defensively, and um, and I've I'm pretty fortunate because I've got a group of, of veteran, mature, uh, the whole room for that matter is um, you know is is a not a well-oiled machine, but you know you you can imagine what it's like to coach Jay Higgins right now and, and Nick Jackson. Like it, it, sometimes they humble you with you know the amount of football that they they have. So. Um, you know, but I, I didn't want this to become a distraction to them. So my day-to-day -day up until, you know, really maybe going into Thursday afternoon and, and Friday was, you know, what it has, you know, what it's always been to include my time with Phil and what we were trying to do defensively. So, you know, the, the process didn't change a whole lot until, you know, probably Thursday afternoon. But, um, you know, the celebration afterwards, um, I'm just, you know, I'm happy for the guys. Like, it's... You know, it's it, it was all about them, um, you know, and it, it always has been. And the players win the games. Norm told me that a long time ago. You know, when I GA for him, it's not going to be about schemes. It's not going to be about strategy. At the end of the day, it's going to be about the players. And they certainly went out there and, you know, they ended up, you know, they ended up winning the game for us in the second half. So the celebration was, you know, a little bit of icing on the top. But, you know, it's always fun after a game when he wins. Hey, Seth, Elliott Club, Hawkeye Beacon. Um, just wanted to ask about Reese Vanderzee. I don't know if you saw that coming today, the two touchdowns and however many catches. I was just asked that uh, by Gary on the radio, and um, no, not surprised. Not surprised. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, Reese, probably for the first two weeks of camp, was, you know, a freshman. And, you know, he was in a freshman role. And then, 
you know, I think our offensive guys started to see some things that, that he was doing that um, gave them the confidence that, you know, let's let's put him in there and see how he swims with some of these other guys. And, you know, so they put him in there, and um, there were plays that were made, um, plays very similar to the ones that you guys saw today. You know, so not surprised. However, it is, you know, it is college football at its, at its highest level. And, you know, when you introduce somebody of, um, of that type of youth, you know, you just really aren't sure what's going to, you know, what's going to unfold. And, um, you know, I think the story, the story is even much better considering what happened in the first half, you know, just, you know, cause we were, we were still trying to get our feet on the ground, you know, from a, from an offensive standpoint. And then he goes out there and makes some of those plays, you know, the one where we were headed to the North side that he caught out, got over the middle. Like, you know, those, those are, those were impactful plays. So, not uh, not surprised at all. Um, however, you know, just to do it in a college football environment, you know, I think that that says a lot about Reese. Scott, then John. Scott Dockerman, the Athletic. I wanted to ask you about in the first half. It seemed like it was a, a missed block, a missed uh, a penalty. Something just kept stopping drives um, on offense. What was kind of your message and Tim's message at halftime? And where do you think it got ironed out to where there seemed to be a real good flow on offense? Yeah, I think uh, you know it was. You know what, what they do defensively is, um, I mean, they're 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 finding ways to load the box defensively, and um, you know, I, I think I think our tempo. The one thing that that's probably reflective in the second half is our tempo offensively picked up a little bit. Um, you know, we we talked at halftime just about the urgency, and um, you know, I'm 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 thankful we you know we had a long conversation about this as a staff the other day, and I'm sure it's you know noticeable to you guys, but we did defer, um, you know, which is a little bit out of the norm, um, you know, around here. But, you know, we were we were fortunate to get that first drive offensively in the second half, and we were fortunate to, to move the ball there. And I think that that, you know, and that, that, that kind of led to maybe some of what existed, you know, in the first half that gave us some, some troubles. Like, you know, it, but if you do look at it, what you, what you should see is, you know, a little bit more urgency and a little bit more tempo was, was reflective there. And, um, and our guys bought into it like it was, you know, it was one of those deals where, you know, you come in at halftime and you're in a 6 nothing game and, and you've got the lead, but it's still one possession. Like, you know, something's got to change. And, you know, our, our guys, our guys stuck to the plan, but, you know, we did, you know, we did emphasize just trying to, trying to move the ball down mm -hmm. the field, get in and out of the huddle a little bit faster and not allow, you know, a defense that really feasts on, you know, looking at a picture and, you know, and, and dialing into it. John said these year after see that going back to Reese's second touchdown, the one on the south end, didn't seem like that was a high percentage play usually, but <laughs> somehow it happened. And then with the turnovers, kind of what do you think led to kind of some of those more opportunities than you guys had last year? Yeah, I think you know we we've placed. Uh, I'll start John with the uh, with the turnovers. Um, you know we've placed a greater emphasis defensively on on turnovers, and um, I'm not sure who it was I spoke with in the preseason where. Um, I think it might have been, it might have been Mike. Um, you know, he had mentioned just, you know, in regards to our defense and, you know, Phil Parker's defense and, you know, what we've done statistically. The one statistic that was pretty glaring was, um, you know, as good as we were last year defensively, we were awful when it came to takeaways. Um, awful. And so we've placed a greater emphasis on that. Um, you know, we've actually talked to other folks in college football coaching staffs that have given us some ideas. and. You know, so we've tried to implement that stuff, and and hopefully what you saw today was was an indicator of that. And you know, we actually had a takeaway taken away from us when Jay got called for holding. Um, you know, that could have been a momentum play, but you know, to to know that you know what it is that we're emphasizing, you know, is showing up on tape, and we get a chance to to talk about that with our guys tomorrow. That that'll be a big deal. And then, you know, going back to Reese's catch that he had in the south end zone, like it just, you know, I mean, some things happen, you know, and and you know, some guys. You know, or just you know, that's that's the way they are. I mean, Desmond King, Cooper Najine, you know, you, you talk about guys that you've seen around here before that, you know, they they make plays and sometimes you're just sitting there wondering like how the hell did that happen? But, you know, it's, it's football and, and you know, those guys are yeah, it's it's nice to see. Tyler Cashman with the Des Moines Register. Something that uh, Kirk talks a lot about is playing complimentary football. Could you maybe just touch on how close today was to the framework of kind of what you set out to do as a program? Yeah, I think the, you know, even though the, the two the two halves are noticeably different, 
Um, I think what you find there is, is you find examples of complementary football in both halves. And um, the fact that, you know, that we were able to overcome, you know, some momentum changing penalties, uh, some plays that were taken away from us, uh, and yet still stay the course, you know, offensively and defensively. And I know offensively it was, you know, it was a little bit of a struggle to get things going in the first half. But the fact that we were going out there defensively and trying to complement that with three and outs and giving them the opportunity and, um, and I'll take I'll take full credit for the fourth and two that that, that we tried you know we tried going for on the on the uh, plus side of the field like that was you know that was one of those deals where you got confidence in what you're doing defensively you know they got the ball inside somewhere between the forty and the in mm-hmm. the fifty and you know I just felt like hey there's here's an opportunity where if you know if we can get this which we didn't get but if we could get this then maybe that would give us what we need offensively but knowing that. You know, whether it be our punter, whether it be our punt unit, whether it be what we had in the return game, even though some of those opportunities were taken away from us, certainly how we were playing defensively, like that was going to give us, you know, that opportunity at that time to try to convert this fourth and two and see if we can get this thing, you know, going. But, you know, it didn't happen, but that's, you know, and then the second half is a unbelievable example of complimentary football. Just going out there, moving the ball down the field, changing field position, stopping them defensively, Using your return game and your punt game to, you know, to try to control the field position. Uh, I think, I think both halves noticeably different, but you know, both great examples of complementary football. Got four more in queue. We'll start with David. Uh, David Eichel, HawkeyeInsider.com. I gotta go back to Reese Vanderzee. I mean, I think Luke and Cade both said he's quiet, but he was unfazed by everything going on. This is a guy who entered summer ball with an injury. Played quarterback last year in high school, small town Iowa, and for him to step up the way he did. What has kind of allowed him to be prepared for the moment? How did he kind of step up when you guys needed him to step up when the wide receiver room was down a couple people? Yeah, I think, you know, opportunity comes in, in, in a lot of different ways. And, you know, I'd start with he's, you know, he's on a charter bus, and not a yellow bus. Um, you know, so that's that's a big difference in, um, in kind of how he's probably viewing things. Um, you know, but... You know, we, we have had our share of injuries when it's come to, you know, that position. And um, historically that happens during camp. Camp is, camp is a, it's, it's grueling in a lot of ways. And, and those that are, you know, putting a lot of miles on their tires. And, you know, but from the second that he jumped in there, like he's, you know, he hasn't looked like, you know, a 17 or 18 year old. He hasn't looked like he just came to us on a, on a yellow bus. Like it's, you know, it's been pretty obvious that, you know, he can go out there, he can compete. You know, we're fortunate that he, you know, his frame, his size, like, you know, it's, it's not, it's not like we're looking at this two years down the road, trying to, trying to build this body. And obviously he needs a lot of work when it comes to, you know, you know, his physical development, but there's already some that has taken place. And I just, I credit that to, I credit that to the state of Iowa, to, you know, to the football here in the state and the players that play in this state, like they just, you know, and he's tough minded too. And, you know, he certainly didn't flinch today and we haven't seen any flinching out of him up to this point. Coach Dan Stacy, Sportscast Media. I was impressed by your kicking game today. You have a new punter, and he did really well. And of course, your field goal kicker Stevens did did outstanding. I I saw no flaws. You had to been pretty happy with that. Yeah, it was. You know, our, our kicking game. Um, you know, and and you know, like like Reese. You know, and and I say this, and I talk about Reese while I'm talking about Reese. Um, like Reese Vanderzee, and then and then Reese, um, our punter. Like the you know the concern there is just the unknown. You know, mm-hmm. major college football, you know, 70,000 fans, Kinnick Stadium, the emotions that go into that. You know, Drew certainly is, he's, he's seen that during the course of his career. So I don't think any of us were, um, were too worried about Drew Stevens. <coughs> but when, when it comes to Reese and, you know, I mean, think about it, you're 15 yards from where the ball's being snapped. you got to catch the ball. you got guys bearing down on you. And now we want you to put the ball in the air. And, you know, with the exception that, of the first one that fluttered off the right side of his foot that, that didn't travel for, you know, the, the yardage that we would like. Outside of that, he, he did an exceptional job. Um, 